All right, good morning comets. Today I wanted to give you a really short proof that the number zero is even. And you're probably thinking to yourself, this is pretty obvious. I mean, two is even and four is even. And even the negatives of them are even, like negative two and negative four. But what about zero? Is it just that it's divisible by two? Is that the only reason? Because we also know that zero can be divisible by any positive integer or negative integer anyways, just not zero. So what is the proof that zero is actually an even number? Well, let's go ahead and define an even number and an odd number. So an even number is just gonna be a number, let's just call it n, that can be expressed as two times k, where k can be any whole number, integer. All right, let me go ahead and define an odd number and give you some quick examples with that. So if something is odd, let's say n is odd, then it can always be written as two times k plus one. That's the difference where k is some kind of integer. So let's look at the evens first. So what if k is one? Well. 2 times 1 is 2, so 2 must be even. What if k was 2 then? Well, then I'd get n is 2 times 2, which is 4, and we know that 4 is even. How about the odd numbers? What if k was 1? Well, 2 times 1 is 2, but then you got to add that 1 at the end. So 2 plus 1 is 3, and 3 is an odd number. So these definitions seem to be pretty airtight. They seem to work. Now, let's go ahead and assume that zero is not even. This is called a proof by contradiction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume the opposite of my conclusion. I'm going to assume that just for the proof's sake that zero is odd. What that would mean is zero would have to be written as some kind of 2k plus 1. So let me go ahead and write that right here. Zero is equal to 2k plus 1. So what does that mean? Well, with a little algebra, we can solve this equation for k, right? I want to get k by itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides just so I can get rid of that plus 1. So watch this. As I take away 1 from both sides, I'm left with negative 1 on the left side. And since these 1s disappear, I'm just going to be left with 2k. That's it. <laughs> um, so now I've got this 2k is equal to negative 1, and I still want to get k by itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by 2 on both sides, just so I can get rid of that coefficient of 2 right here. And you'll see how it does because they reduce, and k is left by itself. Okay? So it turns out that k is equal to negative 1 half. Oh, but wait. Remember what our condition was? k had to be an integer. That means it has to be some kind of positive or negative whole number or zero. And this negative one half is not an integer. It's a rational number, but it's not a whole number. So it can't possibly be an integer. That means we've reached what's called a contradiction. Because we started off assuming that zero is odd. And it turns out when we go down that path of thinking, we arise at a contradiction. Arise, why did I say that? We fall into a contradiction? I don't know what the verb is, but basically I draw these two arrows that meet each other in the middle to say that, hey, I've reached my contradiction. So that means that zero must not be odd, like we assumed right here. Zero must be even. So let me go ahead and show you how that would work. So I said before that if a number was even, it can be written as two times k. So let's go ahead and try that for zero. I'm gonna do it on the right side this time. So zero is equal to two times k. And if we divide by two, watch what happens. The twos cancel and I get zero divided by two. And of course, we know that's zero. You can put that in your calculator and figure that out. And we find out that k is equal to zero. 
Well, that's good because zero is an integer, and we said that for our condition for the even definition, that k must be an integer. So this way works. This way does not. It leads you to a contradiction. Therefore, zero must be an even integer. And when I'm done with my proof, I put a little box that I fill in to show that the proof is over. All right, that's it.